Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this work is about uh, evaluation of color pre-processing for batch-based classification of H and E stain images. Um, this is briefly the outline of the speech. Background of objectives, materials and methods, experiments and results, and some final considerations. So we all know that automatic classification of tissue samples is a hot topic in digital pathology with a number of applications, including computer assisted diagnosis, um, classification of tissue subclasses, uh, disease grading and prognostication, and so on. Still, there are a number of problems that limit the application of <coughs> automatic, automated methods on a large scale. Among them, the lack of large enough data sets and well stratified data sets for, to train the classifiers. And another one is the variation in the visual, in the visual appearance of the tissue samples that arises from different uh, chemical reagents and dyes, different tissue preparation procedures, uh, different settings and acquisition devices. So this is the topic that we investigate in, in this work. And in particular, we, want, we wanted to investigate if we could use color preprocessing in order to compensate for these changes and if this can improve the accuracy of automatic classification. For instance, in, in these slides we can see how the, the change in the visual appearance can be actually quite huge. Here we have three different <coughs> types of staining, and in this work we focused on H&E staining. So the objectives of the study were to evaluate the, the impact of color pre-processing on patch-based classification of H&E stain images and uh, to assess the effects of color, different color pre-processing methods coupled with different image descriptors, including traditional hand-designed descriptors and, and convolutional networks. Um, for this work, we use seven different data sets of H&E stain images. The data set uh, features different types of tissue. We have Agios Pavlios, this is invasive ductal carcinoma, uh, brachies, breast cancer, the case of multi-class colorectal cancer, NIA lymphoma, three different classes of lymphoma. Then again, two data sets of breast cancer, and one last, the last data set is again colorectal cancer. Um, the data sets are quite different. The number of patients is different. The num number of samples for each class is different. The resolution of the images is different. Methods, right. Um, color pre-processing is, is quite, includes a different classes of, of methods actually. Um, we attempted a, a taxonomy here. Uh, we think that it's convenient to divide these methods into three different classes. We have color augmentation, which was not investigated in this work, but I gather it will be the subject of the next speech, actually. Then we have color deconvolution and color normalization. We can be still subdivided into color constancy and color transfer. Uh, let's start with color deconvolution. This is about um, taking an input image in an RGB format and subdividing, de decomposing it into three different channels, each one representing the amount, in this case, of hematoxylin, eosin, and, and background. Um, in our study, we use Rifrock and Johnston method. Then, about color normalization, let's talk of color constancy. So, th th this is the, the process whereby we, we, we try to assign a constant color to the same object when acquired under different illumination conditions. This, this subject has been much studied in, in object recognition, obviously. And he here we consider three different methods. A chromaticity representation, which is just an intensity-based normalization. 
uh, gray word normalization, which is based on the assumption that the average color in a scene is gray, and histogram equalization, which consists of stretching the intensity distribution of each color channel. Here we can see some uh, qualitative results. Um, we notice that there are, there are some artifacts, clearly. The, the, the resulting images look quite artificial, but the question is, does it affect negatively automatic classification? Well, we'll see. Right, the last method that we consider for color pre-processing was color transfer. So in this case, what we want to do is to, we take an input image and we want to modify the color distribution of that image to match the color distribution of, of another image. So in this case, we have two inputs to our algorithm, the original image and the target image. So the result depends on the target image used. And in our experiments, we used for, in this case, four different images. Uh, three of them are histology images, different from the one uh, of the data sets uh, that I've already presented. And one of them is, is a different one, it's a, it's a color checker. We wanted to see what, what happened using different target images. And we, we use two different methods for color transfer. One is quite classic and not specific to histology images. This is Reynard. And another one, Masenko, was specifically designed for H&E stain images. And these are some, again, some qualitative results. And clearly, in the case of the, of the color checker, the resulting images look quite, quite weird. In the other case, we could, we could say that the results are actually not quite bad. But again, how does that translate into the, the accuracy of automated classification? OK. Regarding the image descriptors, nowadays we have two, two main families. We have the, the so-called traditional hand-designed ones, and we have the, those based on deep learning, convolutional neural networks. Um, the traditional ones can be based uh, on color, color alone, on texture alone, or on a combination of both. And we consider eight methods, all of them quite classic. Um, color histograms, Gable filters, co-occurrence matrices, and local binary patterns. For regarding the, the CNN-based methods, we, we, we used for pre-trained networks without, in an off-the-shelf manner, without any retraining or, or fine-tuning. The features in this case, right. <laughs> okay, let's go to the, exper to the experimental part to test the, we, test, we tested the accuracy of each combination, color pre-processing and image descriptor for, for any of the data sets with a very simple classifier, 1 and n, stratified sampling um, with a train ratio 25 and 12.5%. 12 12 These are the, the absolute accuracy, which are not very interesting as absolute values. It is more interesting to, to see what happened on a, on a relative basis. It, ha it happened that doing nothing Applying no color preprocessing was the best or second best option in seven cases out of 14. Uh, histogram equalization was the sec best or second best in three cases, as well as uh, chromaticity representation. Regarding the image descriptors, the networks performed best or, or second best in eight cases out of 14, and the, and the color histograms in six cases. And this this box both to represent the, the difference to the baseline for each color preprocessing method. And it is interesting to see that in the case of color transfer, there, is, there isn't any significant difference 
between the target image used. So even if we use an image that is not an histology one, uh, there, there isn't much change in the results. This is quite significant. If we group the results by, by class of image descriptor, we can see that the descriptors that are worst affected by color preprocessing are those based on color, which is, uh, makes sense, and those based on the convolutional networks. So I, I'll just um, skip to the conclusions because time's running. So con in conclusion, um, I mean, the results of, of our experiments indicate that um, color preprocessing is something that should be considered with, with some care. And in most cases, in our scenario, doing nothing was actually the best option. There were some cases in which it, it did actually work and gave some improvement, for instance, with color deconvolution. That's very interesting and, and worth investigating in the, in the future. And another important, I think, take home message is that uh, it would be incorrect to, to consider the color preprocessing method separately from the image descriptor used. Uh, the two things should be, the effect of the two things should be considered together. Um, and this is it for me. Mm. Any questions? We have time for just uh, one quick question maybe. Uh, I have one uh, thought. So what we've discussed um, previously over the past few days is that often if you're working with, say, a convolutional neural network, you may train on one data set, but then when you get another data set in, the quality drops, and stain variability is one of the reasons for that. Uh, but what you've suggested here is that simply normalizing the images to make them colors more constant isn't necessarily a solution. So what would you say is the uh, way around that, so the way that we can make generalizable classifiers? Um, uh, I'd say that uh, possibly, obviously, uh, uh, not, um, uh, possible not to work around, but the thing is that obviously you, you need a, a large enough data sets and not, it's not only a matter of being large, they need to be well stratified. And uh, another, another possibility is color augmentation, but that we have not investigated in, in this work. Uh, 